episode starts off with Loki waking up in this strange world where there's a bunch of Loki variants. After he got After pruned. He got pruned. Thank you. So he got pruned. Now he's in a Loki world. The Lokis pick him up, tell him that there's a big ass monster that they basically got to fight or they basically just got to survive. Life. So thoughts of the original three Lokis. Kid Loki is the hardest because his yeah. nexus event was off in Thor. <laughs> like he definitely the hardest. He sure. bought that. Out. He bought that action. But um, he killed. He killed Kid Thor, which, I mean, he is a kid as well. But I don't know. It's have you weird. killed any adolescent God of Thunders? You got any no. God of Thunder bodies under your belt? But if okay, Big Loki man. killed Big Thor, that would be harder than. Well, Kid obviously Loki. that hasn't happened, right? The only one that's killed a Thor is is Kid Loki. Shout out to Kid Fair Loki. Enough. He's a goon. Young, my young, young shooter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, man. Um, so Kid Loki is interesting for that reason. Brokey is interesting for obvious reasons. He has his own millionaire, or he was probably deemed worthy before Thor, because you know Loki's older. Why does Black and Loki then, have to be bold? Why no, why did Black Loki have to be the first one to betray everybody? That's what that I'm trying to figure up. out. Why that, why he couldn't be one of the loyal pushy. ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why couldn't he, why he couldn't be loyal? Why he couldn't go to the next joint. Renslayer <laughs> shitty as hell. B15 locked up and, and, she and don't even know why. Yeah, and Brokey is 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 a, is a criminal. Old Loki had the int- the most interesting story though. Right? He actually played out his life exactly to the T how it was supposed to go all the way up until the point of uh, Thanos attacking their shit after Ragnarok. I thought it was I thought it was kind of funny that like the TVA left him alone, right? So like obviously he was supposed to die, but then he escapes that death and go in and he lives his life out on some deserted planet and they just left him alone. I thought that part was interesting because it's not the the fact that he didn't die right that he created this illusion and then skipped out was the nexus event enough from what we've seen so far right like it's been simple stuff the dude that got pruned first and and back in episode one was late to work so i have a hard time believing that loki skirting his death and then escaping to a deserted planet was not a nexus event um it wasn't only until he tried to contact thor again that they came and scooped him up so I, i thought that was a little interesting um, I think in that case, though, he basically went off the grid. He didn't die, but he wasn't missing. impacting anything significantly enough. So yeah. it kind of worked out until he decided, OK, I'm about to leave and mm. come back. And then that was the next event that kind of sparked everything. I mean, I guess you would think that him initially leaving in the first place is what would leave the door open for all of that shit to happen. But I mean, again, we're not. We split theirs, I guess. I don't think that Gator Loki is actually Loki. I think he ate Loki. I think I he ate the Loki too. from his timeline. Because you see he eat up and just chomped off President Loki. Yeah, he was biting on Chomped his hand yeah. off. Which, by the way, I've never seen less gory gore than in the MCU. Like, the last episode where they were fighting the TVA agents in front of the timekeepers, Sylvie stabbed somebody, like, through the chest. And it was like, it was like dry. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> where the hell? And so then. Digitized. Yeah. And then so uh, President Loki gets his hand bitten off. And it's like this quick little splatter of blood, quick, quick little splitter, little splash. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's just like, you just see a nub and it's no blood. I'm like. No like process, get, just automatic. Trying, like, yeah. yeah, y'all trying to dip y'all feet into the, the gory, you know, but I, I, I'd rather y'all just come out and do it than that, because that, that kind of looked a little silly. It makes the fight scenes look comical when that yeah, kind of shit happens. Yeah, because they be getting to the action, but then it don't be a whole bunch of blood. And I think it's because it's Disney Channel, though. Not Disney Channel, but, you know, Disney Plus. I think but that's I mean, why they do it that way. You know, I, I would hope, you know, that as they continue to make content for adults that, you know, it would get a little more, you know, ramp up the volume, ramp up the volume a little bit, just just yeah. a tad, you know. Actually, show blood when someone loses loses a body part when they're dismembered. That's all I'm asking for. You know what I mean? He just shouted and just was like, "All right, I'm out." Oh, <laughs> like okay, all right. <laughs> My man. So you mentioned President Loki, and obviously the gang of Lokis who come across 
the three Loki's hideout. I'm sorry, I keep saying three, it's four because alligator Loki, but I don't respect yeah. him enough. Anyway, <laughs> so they come across the Loki hideout and oh obviously God, a fight dude. ensues. By the way, I did not expect that scene to be in a Loki hideout. I thought that was in the TVA when I first seen that scene. Of Loki, I thought like, so too. In front of it. I, I thought the whole thing was we just going to get a gang of Lokis and take them back to the TVA. Honest, honestly, honestly, I would have preferred that than what we got in this episode. Because you what we got was, plan. was more filler. This was this this episode felt a lot like what we got in episode three, where it was like, all right, well, we got the main question that needs to be answered. Who's behind it all? We've got our protagonists. They are together now. And it just feels like they just need to stretch it out. And I'm just like, now I feel like I know who's behind it based off of what we've seen so far. And I feel like if they were going to go that way, then they could have given us more to lead up. Right. Like you're you're kind of asking me a lot to sit through episode three and five and then to give us what eventually I think is going to be the ultimate Loki variant, the one who was actually able to conquer and have his glorious purpose. Right. If that's where we're going with this and it's not going to be Kang, it's not going to be a variant of Kang and they're trying to keep it very grounded then I, 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 I feel like you could have done more with those two episodes. There's no point in, in, in dragging it out or giving these, these throwaway parts because the only thing that really happened in this episode that moved the story forward literally was them enchanting Elias and finding the hideout of whoever's behind this. Like, you gave me 48 minutes to build up to that. Like, not actually finding out who it was, Right. Not them going there and, and, you know, some ominous voice talking from behind the camera and we don't see who it was. We didn't even get an extra credit scene in this episode, which is which is really against what they've been doing so far with all these shows. WandaVision started having after credit scenes after episode like three or four. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, same thing. After, after episode three, they had an extra credit scene every episode. So like, I just really don't understand what the purpose of at least two of these episodes have been because it seems like there's just a bunch of bizarreness and then at the very end they'll throw you a nugget that's relevant that's fair that's fair okay, good old I, I think the plan was always that episode six was supposed to be the episode mm -hmm. i just I, I i do feel like episode five could have had i guess a little bit more to it um it could have had a little bit more substance maybe hinting at what we were looking for in episode six. So I, I do agree with that. But I think I always knew, obviously, episode six was going to be the big reveal and then the big fight. It just, it fell flat because you would think if episode is going to be the episode that this one would set the stage. And, yeah. and, and while it did that to a certain degree, it doesn't have me necessarily, it has me excited because of what we didn't get, not because of what we got, right? It has me excited for episode six because I know that they have questions left to answer in episode six not because episode five was so astounding and now they ha they can't possibly top it in episode six it's not it's not that feeling i, I did, it's not the the wandavision effect right episode seven of wandavision was like oh shit okay wanda wanda is finally you know a scarlet witch here's agatha harkness we've got we got some shit going on right this one just kind of was like they were in the they were standing in place for a very long time even episode five of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was, okay, he's about to step into his own as Captain America, and then six is where he actually finally got to do it. So there was still a lead up with that mm -hmm. show as well. Where this one, it wasn't, I don't think it was as much. It's making me wonder if some of these shows, because we've already, we already knew about WandaVision, how Doctor Strange was supposed to show up at the, uh, at the end of that series. Which honestly would have made it make a lot more sense, uh, uh, but anyways, I, I digress. Um, we know that that was supposed to happen. We have no idea what may or may not have been taken out of Falcon and Winter Soldier, but it seems like maybe they had ideas of making it a little bit more immersive. And you know, who knows? Kevin Feige, whoever, kind of reined it back in. And and on one hand, I get that because you don't want to make the TV shows so vital to the MCU timeline that if you miss them, 
you can't watch the movies. I don't think he wants to, they want to go that route just yet. But at the same time, you cannot, I don't want to be in a therapy session every time I'm watching one of these Disney Plus shows, right? Like, you know, WandaVision had its thing about grief. Falcon and Winter Soldier had its play on race. This one, Loki, has been more about identity issues, right? And while all that stuff is good to center, it's not like you're coming out and directly addressing it. it you're doing it superficially anyways. So I don't feel as though we need these multiple expose episodes, right? Where, where they're digging deep and they're talking about their feelings for 30 minutes. Like it, it's, it's overdrawn, right? It's kind of like, we get it. After the first three episodes of Loki talking to Mobius, I understand, I get your point, point taken. Let's get to the Marvel stuff, you know? And it feels like they're focusing a little bit more on the, you know, the, life, the cultural the issues, the life issues. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, ah, I could turn on Lifetime anytime, dog. I want to watch superheroes fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's, that's what I want. I thought and that I, was kind of strange. Yeah, it, it, it feels a little Dr. Philly at times. And while that played well in WandaVision, I think it, it went over so well in that series because they went after grief viscerally, honestly, truthfully. It, 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 was, it was there for you to see plainly. Falcon and Winter Soldier danced around the race issues a little bit, right? They danced around they tipped it. They the whole series. They tipped the whole series. And then at the end, I was like, oh, the hey, here go the black you. dude. Here go the Thank black you. man. There's the black man speaking about black issues finally, right? Like, same thing with weeks. yeah with loki it's like okay well we're centering identity as our our main through line for this series and it's like okay well they've kind of tapped on it a little bit they've nudged at it a few times but they haven't done anything blatant and so like if that's the way we're going to go about it give us our two little episodes where loki opens up and he talks about who he is and who he's trying to be who he's pretended to be and i feel like that's enough I feel like that's enough because what you end up with is too much fill. And that, that's what I think this series is suffering from right now. Let me ask you this. Uh, just a question that I guess I kind of had getting away from what you were just talking about in the episode. So Loki gets pruned and obviously they all go to this Loki uh, area where every Loki goes once they get pruned, right? How does Mobius get there and why is he driving a car? So I think Renslayer explained it. Basically, when they prune people, they send them to that void where wherever that, that offshoot timeline, whatever was there that was keep branching off and, and a, could affect the sacred timeline, they send it, they actually transfer it to that void so that whatever was growing out of that timeline stops there. So same thing with, with any variant. Really, honestly... The, the one, uh, another misstep that I feel like this, uh, this episode thing, with you explaining that, well, that means that variants of everybody should be there. That's, that was my next It's question. like this massive wasteland, right? And the only variants that we see pop up are Loki variants. And then how would it, and, 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 and so they could probably explain that way by saying, wait, oh, well, this is the area where all the Loki variants go. Well, then how the fuck did Mobius get there? Is yeah. Mobius a Loki variant? No. No. Well, I mean, maybe. I'll be goddamn. Maybe. It, it could be. It could be. But He's I also haven't seen spy. I haven't seen anything in there that shows how they get their minds wiped and they turn into TVA agents. And I didn't hear Ravona or Renslayer confirm that either. So that, that part of it is still up in the air, how the TVA agents actually become TVA agents. Um, you know, I've, I've heard some theories about, you know, the variants get pruned, mind wiped, and then turned into agents, but none of that has been confirmed yet. So, yeah, I, I think that was a bit of a missed up because if this is where you're just randomly sending shit that you have to prune all over the universe, we should see a lot more. The only thing that we saw that wasn't a Loki was Thrall, the, the frog Loki. When they were going underground, you seen Mildare and it was the little thing jumping in the jar that was frog Loki. Okay. Uh, I mean, Frog Thor, Frog Thor. But yeah, that was the only being that we saw on this plane that wasn't, speaking of plane, did y'all see the Thanos copter? It was a no. helicopter in one of the scenes that had Thanos written on it. I, I, don't, know where that, I don't know where the fuck that came from. 
It was a no. Thanos helicopter. Yeah, that was, that was, I that feel was like I've seen it, but didn't see it. That was the one that. So I feel like they substituted actual like plot content with Easter eggs. That's 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 what they that's what they essentially did with this. It was like we ain't gonna take you too far on the story. We're gonna give it all to you in episode six, but we'll throw out a million and one Easter eggs that kind of make up the difference. So work with me on this on this Mobius is Loki. So. Would it not make sense that if Renslayer is working with whoever the villain is in this, that she would need to keep the person who, you know, would be a Loki close to her so that she can prevent any other Loki from figuring this whole thing out? Uh, I don't believe that she's working with whoever is behind the TV. I don't think she knew about all of this shit. I think she's so indoctrinated that she's kind of doing it out of just blind faith. But if it would make sense that Loki would be a, uh, uh, or excuse me, Mobius would be a Loki variant just because of what we were just talking about. Like if we didn't see any other variants there in this area, other than Loki variants, how, how did, Lo- how did Mobius just appear? Where did, where did he come from? I feel no. like that just becomes a, a storyline that they're just going to answer in episode six, hopefully. We'll see. Um, and then obviously we get closer to the ending. They have to fight Elias. Um, and basically the way that they decide that they're going to fight him is by trying to enchant him so that they can basically make way to get past the void. Uh, and then we see a, a awesome moment for classic Loki and that he provides the distraction to allow them to actually enchant Elias. Any thoughts Dope. on that? Best part of the episode is when he brought up that entire. I think it was. I think he was trying to, to recreate Asgard. Um, but that was dope. That was dope. And so if he's that powerful, and we just watched the Lokis, um, Sylvie and Loki together enchant this cloud monster Elias, then we've we've definitely been nerfing. Loki's power set in the MCU so far for sure um because we've never seen him do anything like that I uh I think that that'll that will probably pay a play a bigger role in episode six um when they get into this final battle versus whoever it is that was behind the TVA all along um but I I, I thought I thought old man Loki's go out is his uh his send-off was pretty dope I do wish he would have died a little bit better. He just kind of got eaten, and then that was it. But, you know, I guess I'm just being too about it. Hold on. I just put something together. What if being it? eaten by a life is what resets them and, and makes new TVA agents? Because you see, he disappeared, mm. right? And so the first time we saw somebody disappear and assume that they were dead, we were dead ass wrong, and they ended up in this void. Well, what if a life eating them from the void is what turns them? Because... Eliab goes directly to wherever the the uh, the new prunes go, right? That ship appeared. Eliab was on him right now. Uh, uh, Loki appeared, and he was trying to hunt him down. See where that where that opening led to, right? So, if that's the case, if he's automatically taking all of these, you know, n- these these new arrivals to the void and, and and getting them as soon as they drop inside the void then that could be how they're gaining all their numbers in the TVA. I just did that just now. That wasn't one bad. That does bad. make sense. I, I'll give you that. It's a possibility. Okay. I see you coming up with some theories today. The still strange tension between Lady Loki and regular ass Loki. Oh, well, it's not weird, strange like, no more, bro. They're together. It's a thing. They're, together. they're officially they're a thing. They are together, but they keep having these weird moments where Loki will like look and like, he looks like he wants to go in for a kiss, which is still weird, by the way, because it's still him. Still he himself. is her, and she is him. They're still one and the same. But they keep going for these moments where it's like they're going to lean in and finally like kiss each other or some shit, and then they just don't do it. I hate <laughs> that shit. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, bro. It's it's your typical, you know, rom com. Will they? Won't they? Kind of give and take you know what i'm saying does she love him or does she not i wouldn't be so bothered with it if it wasn't him if (laughs) If it wasn't a version of him yeah you got to keep reminding yourself of that like man this is not just like him 
finding a star cross lover. Like this is just a Loki from a different universe. Like it's him. It, it, it you are him. He is you. Y'all are Loki together. So like you are you. You are you. It's very it is strange. It's strange. But wrap your head around it, man. It's the MCU. Get over it. Any thoughts on what's gonna happen in episode six? Any predictions? That's the last episode, right? Yep. yep. Man. Let them fight. That's Let right. all them niggas. Let all them niggas fight. That's how I feel like this is gonna be a big old battle between all of them. Even though it's Loki, Loki happened already. Loki on Loki crime. No pun intended. <laughs> I think that if, if I had to put my official stamp on it, I'm going to say that the person behind the TVA and all this going on all along was a Loki variant. It will probably be the strongest Loki variant. Honestly, well, no, I, I won't go too far into it. But yeah, Loki is probably a Loki variant. Let's say that our Loki wins, Sylvie dies. Loki takes over the TVA. Mm. Okay. That's all I got. And that's that's me hoping that they go with the most heartbreaking ending. The most Disney ending is they band together, they beat the whoever is behind it, and him and Selvi ride off into the sunset. That's gonna be the most Disney ending that we can get. But that would be so ass. If they're serious, Sylvie dies, Loki's heartbroken, and then he ends up taking over and ruling the TVA. Sylvie dying actually kind of makes sense. Um, I remember classic Loki calling Loki the god of the outcasts. And so he's mm-hmm. kind of by himself. And so him not having Sylvie would continue that theme of him being alone, him always being the loser. So that would make the most sense. We'll just, I guess we'll see if that actually comes to fruition yeah yeah man when i first uh when i first got disney plus right the first thing that stood out to me about these shows was that all right they're gonna have a chance to actually dig deep into some of these characters right they're gonna have a chance to actually flesh out some of the lore that's been left out of these movies right we don't have to condense it into a two-hour time span to tell an entire comic book run of a story excuse me but it seems like so it's so far at least they're not very interested in doing that and i feel like that's a bit of a misstep i feel like that's a it's a bit of a mistake because as popular as these shows are now right and as thirsty as people are for for uh mcu content i think this past week was two years Uh, since we got an MCU movie out and that was uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. So people are thirsty for this content right now. But as, you know, other platforms and other companies start pushing out their superhero content even more and, you know, more movies start hitting the box office and things like that, it's going to be less of a, uh, well, you know, the less of a high demand. And so you're going to have to do something to compete. And I'm telling you, these Marvel shows right now, even though they, they kind of occupy their own space, but they don't, they don't occupy the same lane as something like The Boys or Titans or, um, um, or Doom Squad or, or, or you know, that, that kind of stuff. And other companies have shown that that's what they're going to do. You know, you're not only selling products to children, you're selling products to adults. So my kids can watch Disney Plus while I go watch the boys and that'll be fun. You know what I'm saying? Like you can only keep me engaged on kind of Manila content. content. Yeah, for so long. You know, like at some point they're gonna have to ramp it up and 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 give us what we're asking for, right? You people go through these shows, and the thing that's made them so, you know, so popular is the the review culture around it, right? People have their predictions, they have their theories. They, te- they basically tell you what characters they want to see in the, uh, in the series. And so far, on each one of these, it's been a letdown every time. It was let down with Mephisto. It was let down with Madripoor and any mutants. It was a, um, it was a letdown 
with uh, in, in Loki, at least so far with Kang, right? So if you continue this theory, a certain segment of people are just going to start tuning out. I feel like, at least that's that's my opinion. So I, I would just I would be cautious with that, you know, trying trying to stay so grounded that you keep people in, but then you end up turning people away because it's very meh. They've got a they got a chance to to right their wrongs. I mean, this was their first run of shows for the most part. So. Yo, for sure, for sure, they got some original stories coming up too. With you know, She Hawk and 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 you know Miss Marvel and Megan stuff Nostalia. like that. Megan the Stallion is she's gonna be She Hawk. Shut the mm-hmm. hell up. She's not gonna be She Hawk. She's just gonna be in the she is gonna be in the show though. I heard. Oh, for real? Be she- they catch yeah. She Hawk, my nigga. That's the old oh, Rock ready. Nation doing her wonders. She was on Revlon. Now she in Disney, getting that corporate bread. Hey, 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 hey. Where y'all going? Where y'all going? You a Thanks for watching another Back of the Bus Squad episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to check out another episode related to this, go ahead and click that video to the left. And if you want to catch up on some of our other episodes, make sure you click the playlist below.